Hello guys and welcome to Till Vacuum Do Us Part. Today's video is all about home projects that make a big impact in your home. I'd say these are like small to medium projects. There's nothing like large or super crazy, but I feel like it's all in the details. The details are really what make a difference with anything, especially your home. Those small details really do make a big impact. So we're gonna go ahead and get started in today's video. If you're new here, I would love for you to click that red subscribe button. But as you can see, Chase has got it started on this project already. We're clearing out his desk because we are going to be installing him a new one. Higher and higher, I'm gonna raise the flag. My first tip is to have a furniture that fits the space or the area of the room. So if it's too small, it's not gonna look right. If it's too big, it's not gonna look right. So definitely make sure you're finding a good balance. I recently filmed an itch to switch video. If you wanna check it out, it's down below in my description box. But I love switching up rooms to make sure my house is functioning for me. But in that process, I moved my husband's desk into this office and it was just too small for the space. It did not look right at all and it really cheapens the feel. So we did get a brand new desk for him. If you're working in a small space or a larger space, you don't have to buy new, you can buy used, you can buy it off someone else, borrow it, loan it, take it from your parents, do what you gotta do. Um, but if you are buying new, definitely make sure to do your research. I found this desk on Wayfair and it was around $800 and that was before tax and shipping and it was gonna take five to six weeks. I kept Googling it and I found it at our local office depot for $400. I could pick it up the next day and they had a $100 off coupon. So definitely keep that in mind when you're shopping. Okay, so I know what the next question is going to be and it's how do I know if I have the right size item for the space? And basically you're just gonna have to fill that in the space. So Chase had his old desk in there. I knew it felt smaller, so I had him measure his current desk. And then we took that tape measure and went as far out so I knew how big the desk could be. So I knew I needed it between this inch and that inch and I just kept searching until I found it. You can tape it off, use like painter's tape if that's easier. If you have like TV trays, even like sofa cushions, pillow cushions, you can like map out in the room so you can start to get a feel like, no, this is too big or no, that's too small. So I need to stay in between these measurements. And that's honestly how I do it. And I find it's the easiest way is to like visually see it. Another little tip when you're measuring, make sure you're allowing a space for like walkthrough areas. Um, you don't want it to get too narrow. If you're working with like a desk or a bed, make sure you can walk around it. Like I knew Chase needed to be able to like push his chair back to get out and not hit the wall. So just really think about how you're gonna use the space. Try to map it out as best as you can so you can make sure you're getting the right size piece. That's usually how it goes I have done a billion mistakes before Also, pro tip, if you can buy something used, I feel like it's so much better because it's already put together. So anytime we can buy something on Craigslist, I do it. I just feel like there hasn't been a ton out lately, but anytime you buy a new piece and you have to put it together, it can take several hours. This piece did because it had a lot of pieces with it. So anytime we can buy used, we try. I searched and searched and searched and couldn't find anything. So I finally gave in and bought this. But if you're not handy or your husband's not handy, definitely search use because then all you have to do is like move it straight into the space. Maybe I am going crazy. 
I feel like this desk looks so much better in here. He's actually gonna have way more storage, which is gonna be helpful because this office doesn't have a closet. And it also has like drawer dividers for like a filing system, which for him is something he wanted originally, but we couldn't find it like in the budget we were needing. So this turned out to be a major win. Now I'm gonna go ahead and organize a few of the drawers and then I'll show you how the room turned out. Now we're gonna go ahead and move on to my office. This is a space I just wanna shop my house right now and get it looking decent. Later on, I want to do like a bigger makeover, but I'm trying to figure out the space. I'm trying to decide if I wanna go more Scandinavian like the rest of the house. I'm trying to decide if I wanna keep it more glam. So until then, I'm only using pieces that I pretty much have. So this is how it looks for now, but I'm gonna pull some pillows in for my master bedroom to try. I'm gonna throw in some blankets. You're gonna see I'm gonna pull in different pieces just to kind of warm up the space until I decide what I wanna do. So my second tip is just to shop your space and work with what you have. I know a lot of us have spaces in our house we're not fully committed to yet. We may not have the budget we need. We may not know what to do with it. But just by shopping your house and tweaking a few things, you really can warm up the space and make it feel complete until you're ready to work on it. That way, if you have someone over, or even when you're in the space, like this is my office, I'm in here every day, I want it to feel put together. So just pulling in a few extra pieces throughout the house for free, zero dollar budget, I can make it feel so much better, so much cozier, and then I can take my time deciding what to do with it later on in the future. I am so guilty about being in a hurry just because I want to get a space complete and then I decorate in a style that I'm not 100% sold on or I thought I'd like but I didn't know because I rushed into it. So if you're like that, that's who this tip is for. Just use what you have in your house, make it work. Sometimes it can just be moving around the pieces you have in that room. Just by moving around like the items on my desk, it even felt better just from like walking into the space and how I use it. So it doesn't always take money and things. Sometimes it's just cleaning up a space, decluttering, rearranging it a little bit, and that is all free to do. Not a smooth talker, under pressure. Sweaty palms ain't making it much better. Something about you feels so special. Now we're gonna be moving on to the next space, which is my living room and the next tip, which is sometimes updating one piece can completely change the look and feel of a space. So right now we're gonna be working on my living room rug. I'm not gonna lie, I have a lot of tips to give for this, but you're gonna see a showdown of my dog. So you can watch me and Chase. We're gonna be taking apart the whole sectional. If you don't think that's a home project, then you've never taken a sectional apart and try to put a rug down, you'll see us later. It takes several times to get everything centered up. Um, but my boys started to get into a little fight or bickering, they're like brothers. I feel like if I had two sons, this is how they would act. But as I was moving my sectional back here, I had found one of their puppuccinos. Now, mind you, they have like four or six of these. My mom gets them for every holiday and she always makes sure she gets two so they won't fight over it. But through this whole scene of me switching out these rugs, definitely be sure to watch them because there's a whole deeper storyline than just me switching out a rug. Okay, right there, if you notice when Chase first got the puppuccino, George had it, Tiger just went and swiped it from him. You're gonna see this whole thing go back and forth and they're always somewhere in the camera so keep an eye on them. But once again, I wanna talk about rug sizing. This is a good time to use painter's tape and tape off the area that you want your rug to be. I get asked all the time, how do I know what size rug to get? 
So if it's in your living room, you at best, if you have not your budget, you want all the front legs of your furniture to be on the rug. If you don't have your furniture on it, it's gonna tend to be too small and then it's gonna make your room feel smaller. Now, how I've done that in the past, absolutely. There's been times I haven't had the biggest budget to get a big enough rug for the space. But if you have it, definitely make sure at least the front legs of everything is touching it. If you have enough money to get it where all your furniture's on it, even better, but you don't have to. Um, I do have a coupon code with Boutique Rugs, and if you use ASH55, you're going to get 55% off your order, so that is huge. So maybe that will get your rug within the budget you need. Um, if you can just hold out for it, maybe save up. I will say anytime you can get your furniture on the rug, it is going to make your space feel larger. Now Chase is bringing in the rug, and like I said earlier, measure it off, and then I just find the closest size rug that I can to those measurements. Sometimes it may be a little off. If you want to tend to go a little bit bigger, that's fine. Sometimes I go a little bit smaller, just depending on the style. When I get on boutique rugs, you can actually search either by color or by design, or you can search by size. Sometimes I find that's easiest, so I'm not looking for a rug that I love, and then I click on it and it's not in the size. So I tend to shop by size first, just so it kind of narrows it down. So this is the rug I chose. I will have it linked down below in the description box just in case you're looking for something like it, but they have all sorts of rugs on their site. But I do wanna give a few tips. So when you buy a thinner rug like this, I tend to buy thin ones that can be like indoor, outdoor. I just feel like they hold up best and I can clean them because I do have two dogs. They occasionally have accidents. If we spill stuff on them. I just want them super like family friendly at this point in my life. So when they roll them out, they tend to be a little bit wonky. If you'll go and roll it up the opposite direction, it'll help flatten it out even better. But over the next couple days, it will start to relax on its own. Now I have bought their like thicker rugs from them and there's zero issues. Like as soon as it comes out, it's heavy, it's sturdy, it completely flattens out really fast. But if you're getting kind of ones like me that are just more like pet friendly, kid friendly, husband friendly, Sometimes it will take a few days just for them to relax. You got my heart strings vibrating for you now. There's something more, but you don't want to admit it. Whoa, we're perfectly opposite. I will say just by switching this one piece, it made the room feel fresh again. It brought more in the design that I'm going for. I didn't realize how much glam the other one had in its style. This one brings in some of those blacks that I'm throwing in throughout my house. It ties them in from the kitchen. Just switching out this one rug, I swear my house just smells cleaner now and fresher. So maybe it's not a rug that you need. Maybe it's just new throw pillows. Maybe it's new lamps. It could just be new lamp shades. It could just be new light bulbs. Maybe you have like more of the golden lights and you want brighter ones. So just figure out what that might be and switch one thing out. And I promise you that small change is going to make a huge impact. If you're not sure what your style is yet, definitely get on Pinterest and start saving those or get on Instagram, screenshot them, do what you have to do. But then go back later and look at those pictures and see what they all have in common and see if there's any way for you to bring it in. Maybe it's just that they are very bright and airy. Maybe you just need new light bulbs. Maybe you just need to paint your walls white. Typically, it's something that can be done on a budget but just start looking at those pictures and start figuring out what they all have in common. And that's gonna help you start narrowing down your design and just your style taste.
Okay, are you guys keeping up with the boys? I like wanted to narrate that so bad, but I'm trying to get my tips in here as well. Typically, I would cut this part out because I'm coming to like turn off the camera, but if you watch, Tiger goes back at him to get that puppuccino. Who knew that thing was so sacred? But now we're gonna go ahead and put the space back together. Chase is bringing in the coffee table, and just from this angle alone, you can tell how much better this rug goes with our style. Now, this is the next day, just so you know, um, and I'm gonna be getting some spackle. Basically, when we did that itch to switch, we rearranged a lot of furniture as well as wall decor. And so I know it's tempting just to leave those holes in the wall because you can just like tune it out, act like it's not there, but little things like that are super huge. If you will just fill them in with this stuff, sand it down and paint it, your walls are gonna look brand new again. So this is good if you're going to resell it, and this is good if you're keeping it. It's kind of like when you go to sell your car and you make it all clean and fresh and get it brand spanking new and you're like, oh, maybe I wanna keep it. That is so good to do with your home. Keep your home looking brand new and the way you love it so that you wanna keep it longer. <laughs> and that's definitely what I have to do because you guys know I love change, so I have to keep my spaces looking fresh. I also know this can be overwhelming. It's something you put off. It's hard to get like paint out and paint brushes. But honestly, this will take like less than an hour if even that. You just go fill in all the holes, give it a few minutes, let it dry sand it and go back to paint it and I promise you it's not going to take as long as you think it will and it's going to make a bigger difference than you realize. There ain't gonna be one more like you know. Ain't gonna be, ain't gonna be, ain't gonna be one more like you know. It is my goal when I'm doing something like this to find every hole possible. So not just the ones I just now created. I go through my entire house looking for every spot that I can feel or sand before that paint comes out. I make Chase walk through because you're gonna miss something. So have your husband walk through. Kids love doing this. Be like, hey, go look at all the walls and see if you can find any holes. I promise you they're gonna find some that you're missing. And then you don't have to pull all those supplies back out at another time. You're my kind of one of a kind, yeah. I'm gonna get out there and say it cuz there ain't gonna be one more like you know. Ain't gonna be, ain't gonna be, ain't gonna be. Now, if you have some really big holes, they do make this like netting tape that you can put over it because otherwise this like spackle is just gonna keep like falling into the hole. So keep that in mind. If it is a large hole, they also have like drywall texture that you can spray on the wall. So like all your walls aren't textured and then you have this flat surface in another area. So just kind of know what you're working with. Typically when I'm doing this, it's just tiny little nail holes or screw holes. So I never really have to do anything like that. The spackle does start pink and then once it dries, it's white. So you know you can go back and sand it down at that point. But while that's drying, I'm gonna head on to the next project because I like to just keep the ball rolling. If I have some free time and I've got the motivation to work, I'm just gonna keep rolling with it. 
So I'm grabbing our leftover black paint. If you wanna like screenshot this right here, this is the black we've been using and loving. And when we were doing the itch to switch again, we were moving this dresser and it kind of got banged up. Now I could just put a basket in front of this. I also have a spot over here on the wall I'm gonna show you, but I could just cover it up, but you're still gonna see it. And it's never gonna look just absolutely perfect. Just taking like a minute to grab the paint and paint over this, the room's gonna feel fresh. It's not gonna look like it's not taken care of. These are really, really good tips if you're about to sell your house or you're staging your house or if you just want to love your house. I know all of these things seem so minor, but when you get them done, your space is gonna feel just so fresh again. So once again, while I have the black paint out and the paintbrush is already dirty, I'm going to go through my entire house and anywhere I have this black paint, I'm gonna make sure I don't need any touch-ups. And I'm so glad I did. I forgot when I moved to the fireplace in here, we used to have the TV on top of it in the guest bedroom and the TV had kind of stuck to it and messed up the top of it. I hadn't even remembered because it was like full of Christmas decor, but all I did was come in here, sand it down and then give it a small thin layer of paint and it looks brand new. But if I would have put all of the paint up and washed the paintbrush, I would have been so mad later that I forgot to do this. So just keep that in mind, whatever paint color you're using, walk through your entire house and make sure there's no other touch-ups needed. I'm not gonna lie, I got so into the black paint, it crossed my mind to go start painting our laundry room cabinets black, but it was getting late and I told myself that may be reacting a little too quickly, so I didn't, but I am gonna let that soak in for a little bit. But now that I'm done with the black paint, all of my like paint spackle is dry, so I'm just gonna take a little sander. It doesn't take much. Honestly, you can kind of rub your finger over it and it just gets off that excess but I'm just gonna walk around and sand it down so it's nice and smooth before I paint over it. Subscriber tip two, I've never tried this, but people say you can do this with toothpaste, so if you don't have speckle, try that out, but like I said, I've never tried it myself. But now we're gonna move on to the next project, which is this windowsill. So this is where the guest bedroom is now. It's Chase's old office. You can tell George has protected us from so many Amazon men, it's not even funny. But I wanted to show you that this looks like an overwhelming project. It looks like it's gonna take a lot of work. All you have to do is clean it off, sand it down, and put a new layer of paint on it, and it's going to look brand spanking new. And while I was sanding it down, I noticed our blinds were disgusting. So sometimes when it's a home project, it may just involve a deep clean. Just by deep cleaning these blinds, it's gonna make it look so much cleaner and newer, and that's always better. It's better if you're staying in your house or if you're selling it, especially if you're selling it, do some deep cleans. Really think about the areas you're not cleaning. I know from far away, you guys have never noticed this windowsill. I didn't know it was that bad until we were rearranging furniture and I had no idea the blinds were that dirty until I was sitting down and I had like an up close look at them. So just by deep cleaning the blinds, which by deep cleaning, I mean just grab a rag and a cleaner and wipe them off and then sanding this windowsill and then giving it a fresh coat of paint, this looks brand new again and it looked hideous like 30 minutes ago. I'm gonna find a crown so I can put it on me. Swinging from the chandeliers, I won't be sorry. Now I'm gonna grab my third paintbrush and my third paint because now we're gonna touch up all those holes in the walls that we filled. Once again, while I have this paintbrush out and the paint, 
I'm not just gonna be touching up the holes that I filled. I'm gonna see if there's any scuffs, any stains on the wall, any dirty areas, anything that needs to be painted Why it's out. Take the time and just walk through your entire home and paint any of the spaces that you need to. Now, I don't have to worry about this not matching up because this is the exact same wall color that they painted with. If you are getting a new can of paint, even though it's the same color, definitely to make sure to feather it out, like almost keep it more on the dry side and feather it out into the wall so that there's not these like noticeable spots of paint. Also, pro mom tip, if you're gonna be doing this, warn the humans that are inside your house. If it's your kids, your husband, kinda watch your dog's tails if you're like painting down lower so you're not cleaning up a mess later. And then my last tip is to wash your paint brushes immediately. If you want to save them for another project, wash them out immediately, otherwise they're gonna dry out or even if you put them in a cup of water and soap all night, you're not gonna wanna touch them the next morning and you're gonna end up throwing them away anyways. So just push through a little bit longer and get them clean so that you don't have to spend more money buying brushes for a later project. I just want to say you're awesome and I really appreciate you guys making it to this point of the video and sticking it out with me. I hope you guys got some really good useful tips for when you're working on your house because I truly believe small changes make a big impact. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. My next one should be all about organizing so make sure you're subscribed and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!